Hey, welcome back to the shop. You might remember this guy. This is the scissor type clamp noodle that I showed in one of my uh, shop talk videos. I will put a link to the video right here. And while it's pretty rough finished and the the, the knurling wheels have quite a bit of wobble to them. It produces pretty good results. But, as I said back then, I will improve this thing. I will make it uh, a high quality tool. I got some knurling wheels made by Zeus. These are made in Germany and really high quality. And I got diameter 20 millimeters, 8 millimeters wide with a 6 millimeter bore and that's a standard size. I got um, two, one 30 degrees to the left and one 30 degrees to the right that produces a diamond pattern. This is a 0.7 millimeter pitch on here is about a one millimeter pitch and this is for most of the stuff I do too rough so I prefer the more fine knurling. Um, the pins for the knurling wheels are pressed in and uh, they look like they are knurled themselves and then pressed in. Normally there would be no way to exchange these, but we will press them out or hammer them out. Then we will remachine the bores and make axles for the for the wheels that can be changed without having to use a press. And also we're going to make a new pin, a new swiveling pin with uh, with yeah you know one that fits better than a sausage in a hallway um, apart from that I don't think that we're going to do very much main thing are the um, the knurling wheels because they have a horrible amount of run out but still they work pretty good that's the funny thing <laughs> So let's get started and see if we can get these pins out. Okay, I have the first pin out and as I was thinking, these, these pins are knurled on one side and then pressed in. So they come out pretty easy. Um, you just have to look where the knurling is and in that case it's on this side. So we this goes down and I have just a piece, uh, this is an old inner ring of, an, of a big bearing, a cylindrical roller bearing and I'll place the port over it and then with a punch and a hammer we can drive that pin out and there we have the knurling wheel. Those are the two pins. And while we're at it, we're also going to press out this rear pin, which holds this uh, this uh, threaded rod, the adjusting screw. Okay, this was a little bit tighter. This is a straight, this is a straight pin without knurling. This was just pressed in pretty hard. <laughs> in fact, way harder than the axles of the knurling wheels. So let's see what we have. We have pins with a bore of 6.35. That has to be some. Uh, 
inch measurement. I think that's about quarter of an inch. Not in my shop, really. So the new wheels have, of course, a, a six millimeter bore. And uh, the bores in the arms also have six point, uh, six point inch something millimeters. So what we're going to do is, um, yeah, going to machine a bushing that we can drop in. Hmm. We're going to do this. Um, there is not much meat for some weird contraption. Um, uh, I think these slots are also too wide. These are 9.56. This should also be some inch crap. Um, I think we're going to machine a bushing for each arm that goes on the inside. A bushing like this. Um, this will go on the inside, the, the, the stepped the step will be inside, so the um, the opening gets reduced to eight millimeters. That's the width of this wheel, and then we're going to silver solder this this bushing in place, and then we will bore it open to six millimeter, and hope that everything holds. But for that, we will have to open up these holes to maybe seven millimeters. We have two millimeters of meat left on the side, so that's a bit to work with. Uh, I have to think about this. Okay, I decided what to do. I'm going to fill up these bores completely with the TIG welder. Uh, and then I take a piece of cold roll. I'm going to silver solder it to one side of this cutout and I will even it out by hand just uh, filing it to follow the form of, of this curve. Then I will take both of the arms, stand them upright in the milling machine and run a cutter through them, an end mill and cut them exactly to width of our wheel. Then I will lay it down and drill and ream new fresh holes. At least that's the plan. <coughs> to do the weld build up on the bores, I took a piece of 10 mm square copper and I filed it so it's a snug fit into the slot. I might use a hammer to get this in. Oh, there you go. The copper will draw away some of the heat and also will um, will stop the weld from falling through the bore. So let's go over to the Weiss and fire up the welder.
Yeah, I got a crazy amount of bubbling on this one. I think that's because the air couldn't escape because of the copper on the other side. Um, yeah, I hope this... I tried to avoid this by feeding in more wire so it cooks out the bubbles, but uh, I'm not sure if I was successful. Uh, but I think it will still do the job. And of course I have to come back and do the inside too, because I couldn't reach down onto the copper. I'm not much, not enough of a welder to do it that way. Um, but I think I will get it done anyway. For sure that's not going to be an x-ray proof well. But it's better than hot glue. But we will see when we machine it what happens. On one side there will be a plate soldered in anyway, so that's some additional support. And the pin will be stationary in the in these arms or in the bores. The knurling wheel will turn on it, so it's not super critical. I hope this works out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hand file these welds. Now we need to machine them in the milling machine. Ooh, that's still warm. set it up for brazing or silver soldering in that case and I tack welded the piece that I'm going to solder in place with the TIG welder so it doesn't wobble around. I already put on the, um, the flux. And now all that's left to be done is to heat it up and Get some silver solder on it. Silver solder sucked really deep into the into the gap between my two pieces, and I think that's good enough. It's hard to mess up a, a joint that's done by brazing or silver soldering. As long as you have enough flux on there and you get everything up to heat, it's hard to mess it up. You see when the silver solder is flowing and it pulls itself into the gap and you know this is going to be a good joint. Okay, 
I set the, the parts up on the milling machine. I have an angle plate on the table and I bolted the, the clamp knurler against it in a standing position so I can a, run a 6mm amp mill along the end of these of these two arms to remachine the slot to a width of eight millimeters and I'm using the six millimeter carbide three fluter and I'm going to uh, go back and forth and go each time lower the cutter a little bit not too much because I worry that something is going to move on the setup but everything seems to be quite solid but why take chances we have time this is not a race okay let's go we're running at about 1000 rpm we lock the table in position and we're good to go with the 6mm end mill and now I can cut the slot to a width of 8mm plus a little bit to give me some air or some wiggle room for the um, for the knurling wheels um, but this, really, this setup has proven to be more rigid than I was thinking um, I was hand feeding because I was not sure about the setup. I wanted to feel the cut. Um, now I'm going to use the power feed for finishing. This is where your uh, power feed really makes life easier. Uh, you don't have to crank all the time to, to cut down, um, to remove the material. You can just stand there and watch and drink your coffee and enjoy life. So um, there should be 0.6 millimeters um, material left. Uh, in the thickness of the slot that means 0.3 on each side to a nominal size of 8 millimeters and we're going to measure it right now because you never know even if the DRO says, says that uh, that the slot should be 7.4 millimeters uh, I prefer to measure it and of course this is only with calipers this is not yeah 7.41 millimeters that means 0.6 millimeters are left um, 
that means 0.3 per side and I'm going to machine the slot to, point, uh, to 8.05 so I have five hundredths of a millimeter wiggle room for the wheels. I will do roughing to 8.00 and then do a climb cut to 8.05 millimeters. battery of the camera crapped out on me and I finished the slots of camera and as you can see I got a, a pretty decent fit there they fit freely but without any slop so we can tear down this setup And there you can see the two slots and the material we soldered on there. Now we can uh, trim the excess material down by hand with a file. Okay, we're just hogging down the material with the by hand with file. <coughs> Okay, we trimmed down the excess material to the contour of the part without any machine use, just by filing. And you can see pretty good the split line between the part we, uh, we put in there and uh, the base part. And when we hold these two parts up together, you can see that we have a slot very nice in line. That means <clears throat> that means that our knurling wheels will line up quite nicely later when we have drilled and reamed the, the holes for the for the axles. And also we're going to remachine this bore because as you can see 
the finish in there is pretty crappy. Okay, I did this off camera. I laid out the the position of the pivot holes for or the axle holes for the for the nolling wheels, and I just uh, center drilled, pre-drilled, and reamed them to six millimeters. Um, and I just align, I, I center punched it and lined it up by eyes. There is no particular precision. Okay, I got the two knurling wheels and two doll pins, six millimeter doll pins pressed in to get a look how it fits all together and of course the pin drops out. Um, as you can see the, the knurling wheels line up quite nicely and also in that direction they line up pretty good, good enough. Um, what I absolutely don't like is this. Here it is. And this comes from the scrappy bolt which has a shoulder of 12.17 and the bore in these parts are uh, 12.8. That's about uh, 6 tenths of air. That's a bit much. That's a bit, bit much slop. Even in my shop. Um, and also the bore in this part is uh, 9.7. And it's riding on this thread, which is 9.3. So there is also an incredible amount of slack that I just don't like this. Okay, right now we're in the process of drilling and tapping one of these legs. So we can use a set screw to hold the axle in place. And as this is a strangely formed part and I can't really touch off in the X direction anywhere, I'm going to use a pin that we push into the two bores and now we have a reference where we can touch off. So we're using our small edge finder. To find the edge of the dial pin, just make sure we don't hit anywhere and touch off. Okay. Um, I always like to uh, touch off two times and look at the DRO or at the CNC control if you're running a CNC machine and check if there is any uh, discrepancy between the first and the second uh, time you're touching off. And now we can center on, these w on this width. And by the way, thank you for mentioning uh, the the uh, one half function on the DRO. I was not aware that you can actually um, divide the um, actual reading by two with a simple push of the button without using the calculator. So thank you for that. Okay, zero, let's come over and do the same on the outside without zero. Okay. Okay, we want to, um, to center on the y-axis and 
I touched off on the first side zeroed and this is the reading of the second touch off and we want to divide this by half and um, previously I showed this by using the calculator and pu pulling the, uh, the result of the calculator over in the desired axis but that's not necessary I learned that there is a way easier way it's um, choosing the axis in that case Y and pressing the one half button done that's faster so thanks thanks to all that um, pointed that out in the comments um, maybe it's time to read the manual completely but it's the the manual of the uh, digital readout is written in a, in a horrible English really apart from that the this um, Ditron uh, DRO is a really great unit. Um, I have no problems with it. It's it's doing exactly what I expect from a DRO. So uh, I would buy it again. Well, we are using a center drill in that case because uh, because just because no special reason for that. Um, yeah. That's the wrong position. We want to go over three millimeter. Now we are. Yeah, and while I was drilling, I made up a um, um, reason why I use the center drill. It's way shorter and uh, way stiffer than the starter drill, and it's it's easier to start on. This is uh, kind of lightly on a slope, and the starter drill, when I chuck it in the um, in the, in the uh, keyless chuck, it sticks out quite a bit, um, and it tends to walk away on not flat surfaces. So there is a reason why I use the. Um, the center drill. Tap drill. Some cutting oil. And, and you hear this noise, this clack 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 clack. Um, this is what beats up your uh, drill bits. That's the reason why I normally use a starter drill. Um, uh, yeah, an NC starting drill. Um, a centering drill is not really for centering a drill bit. Not really. This is for lathe centers. Change to a four millimeter tap M4 thread. Change to low gear. Get the chips out of the way and uh, check it up. Some cutting off and. Okay, um, I took an, um, two dial pins and I shortened them on the deep bit grinder and I ground a flat on here. And that way I can mount the knurdling wheel without any protruding uh, head of a pin or something like that. That means that I can knurl up to a shoulder or up to the chuck uh, about... about four millimeters close to any uh, obstacle like chuck jaws that's not too bad um, as you can see you just uh, put the knurling wheel in you take your pin drop it in get close make sure that the flat is aligned on top and uh, 
tighten down this set screw. I didn't want to press the, um, the pins in because I want to be able to change the knurling wheels to have uh, finer or coarser uh, uh, knurling wheels or straight or uh, 45 degree pattern or whatever. Um, I don't want to use a hammer all the time to change the wheels. Even if I change them only once a year or something like that. Also, these these knurling wheels wear out, so you have to be able to change them. 